Here's the plan. I'm going to talk about my November game purchases and plays and hopefully get this video out before the end of December. And then in January, I'll put my video out for game purchases and plays in December. And then also right around the January, February time frame, I'm going to talk about my 2019 year as a whole for game purchases and plays and talk about my best of the year. Sometime in the near future, I will also talk about my most anticipated games for 2020. So I've got a lot of video work to do ahead of me and I'm really excited about the two big ticket purchases I made for the month of November, so let's get right to it. At the end of November, I was finally getting my game auction prepared to launch, and I knew I was going to have a bunch of money coming in from that, so I sort of pre-spent on a couple of big items here. The first thing I purchased for November was Clank. Acquisitions Incorporated, the legacy version of Clank, which as I said before is a game that's been a huge hit with my wife and I over the past year or so. As you can imagine, we're super excited to dive into this. Now, our regular legacy group, who we've played through pretty much all the legacy games with, consists of my wife and I and two of our dear friends. Now, they have another family member who enjoys playing Clank, so the problem with this is there are only four players in Clank Legacy, so we couldn't necessarily have the five of us play together. So what we ended up doing was we purchased this and we'll play with another couple who are relatively newish to games in general and hopefully that'll go well and then the other family who are normally doing the legacy games with us we assume that if they're interested in this game they'll pick it up for the three of them and I hope that they do because it'll be fun to talk with them as we each progress through our campaigns so this is one that I hope you will be hearing a lot about in my 2020 monthly game discussions there is a lot to explore here and I've heard very very good things about this this game. I've heard that there's a whole lot of content to be discovered as you play through the game. So stay tuned for a lot more of Clank Legacy. Now, the second thing was a game that I've heard talked about quite a bit by a couple of my favorite board game media people. Joel Eddy of Drive Through Games and Charlie and Raf from the Ding and Dent podcast have well, I guess Raph in particular and Joel have both been getting very heavily into miniatures gaming over the past couple of years after being very long time board gamers. So it's been interesting to listen to them individually talk about the miniatures games they've been getting into. And there is one title they've been talking about that sort of sparked my interest. Now the type of miniatures gaming they're doing is sort of the Warhammer 40k, buy a whole army of figures, get them all painted up, get them on the battlefield and measure the movement with their rulers or templates or whatever and then roll buckets the dice for the combat and I'm not necessarily interested in that type of gaming but I do sort of like the concept of having a bunch of figures on a map interacting and battling with each other and I do have the whole range of Battles of Westeros which has just a ton of figures and armies battling on these sort of map based battlefields and it's one that I've enjoyed a lot in the past and hopefully I'll someday have an opponent to keep playing that game with. But the game that I'm finally getting around to talking about here started off as Warhammer Underworld's Shadespire. Now it was a game that still required that you purchase a little kit that had some miniatures that needed to be assembled and preferably painted, but instead of having sort of a ruler based movement it came with a little hex map and the number of figures was quite small. You only had probably about four to six or eight figures per side that were interacting with each other so you didn't necessarily have to paint up this huge army of figures. And then the rules themselves were simple and the gameplay was very quick. So that caught my attention when I heard them talking about this particular system. And then the next evolution of that system came out that was called Warhammer Underworld's Night Vault. And again, these guys kept talking about how cool the system was. And then just recently, the third edition of that came out that was called Warhammer Underworld's Beast Grave. So again, they kept talking about the system and I kept thinking, oh, that sounds like so much fun, but I don't have a particular opponent that I'd be able to get into the system with. And then somebody said the words, Steampunk Dwarves. And I was like, 
Yes, please. So the next time I was at my friendly local game store, I went to try to find where they had all their Warhammer stuff. And sure enough, they had all the Warhammer Underworld Night Vault, which had that particular Steampunk Dwarf faction. And I noticed that because Beastgrave had just been released, all of their Night Vault stuff was on sale. So I was like, done, I'm doing this. So the base game, Warhammer Underworld's Night Vault was regularly 70 Canadian dollars and on sale for 60. So I got this base system that comes with two factions, a Knight's faction and a Skeleton faction. And then, naturally, I had to get the Steampunk Dwarves which is called Thundrix Profiteers. Each of these little individual expansion kits was regularly $35 on sale for 28. So again, this was a nice bargain to be found. And I wanted my dwarf faction to be able to go up against an elf faction. So I also picked up Yiltharis Guardians, which I think are some kind of spirit wood elves or something along those lines. And then I thought, okay, that's great. I've got four factions, zero opponents to play it with. Sounds like a lot to play with, but... You know, one would think that if your camera memory card ran out of memory, your camera would notify you instead of just letting you talk and talk and talk while it stared blankly at you, not recording anything. <laughs> That will give me a little pity thumb up on this video for recording the rest of this video twice. Uh, so, what I was saying was that I have four factions for Warhammer Underworld's Night Vault now, and zero opponents, so you would think that's more than enough factions. But, I got looking at the other factions on the shelf of the game store, and their little mark down price stickers and I thought well if I have dwarves and I have elves then I obviously need to get an orcs faction so now I have Zarbag's Gits who are the cutest little orfs orfs <laughs> that's a half elf half orc I guess cutest little orcs you ever saw and their little kind of mushroom decorations also brought to mind another faction I saw on this shelf that was this weird kind of mushroom creatures that were the cutest thing and that I really wanted to buy just if anything else just to be able to paint up those figures but I restrained myself on that one and just got Zorbag's gits here and the final one I got was for the hair I admit it I saw the God Sworn Hunt. I saw their cool looking mohawks and thought, I want to paint those mohawks in cool colors. So I got this ragtag band of rebellious warriors here to round out my six factions. Now I forgot the other major selling feature that also finally made me pull the trigger on all this stuff and that is the fact that this whole game is powered by a deck building system. So the figures on the boards that are battling against each other are powered by card play and each of these factions comes with a deck of cards that you have to pull cards out to create a little deck to power your figures for the game. And so because I've completely fallen head over heels for this whole deck building thing, thanks to Magic the Gathering, I thought, oh, this could be amazing just being able to pull out an individual faction's deck with all their own special abilities and be able to put something together and test it out, see how it works. That and the fact that everything is meant to be really introductory level, simple and quick. Even the assembly of the figures here. Oh, one minute. Although they do all come on sprues. So you gotta cut these off and assemble them. They're supposedly just a push fit system, meaning that once you get them off the sprues here, you just click everything into place and you're good to go. Now, I will end up gluing them just to have the extra sturdy protection there. And I'm definitely gonna paint everything up because that's kind of part of the fun here. Although I have such a backlog of figures to paint. I've already started painting the figures for Clank Acquisitions Incorporated in the hopes that I can get that done this week before we get to our first gameplay of that one. 
Prior to that, I had started painting our figures for the Gloomhaven expansion, as well as the ones for Dawn of Peacemakers that eventually I want to get to with the family. So I've got all these figures in various stages of completion in terms of the paint jobs. But when I eventually find the time to hammer through all that, I am looking forward to getting all this stuff painted up. Certainly part of the draw was the really interesting figures and sculpts and the possibilities that could be had for painting them all up. Now you ask me, so Josh, someday when you finally get all that done, get the figures assembled and painted and ready to go, who are you going to play the game with? Why are you going to go and ask me a question like that? Why are you going to do that to me? I don't know, maybe by then my kids will be a year or two older and ready to dive into something like this. Or maybe I'll have made a friend. Unlikely. Anyways, let me get this all cleared off and then talk about the games that we actually did play in the month of November. And now here's my brief advertising time. I still have to get back to my Patreon account and completely revamp it so that it is no longer an exercise in self-sabotage. So that's yet another project I need to get to early in the new year. But meanwhile, I do have linked below this video my PayPal account if you happen to want to send me a little Christmas, happy holidays gift, a little thank you for all the work you did in 2019. No pressure at all. I'm totally happy that I can bring this free content to you for whatever it is, whatever it means. And I do wish all of you a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Now let's get back to talking about board games. As is pretty much usual these days, I didn't get to much adult gaming. I did do a bit of magic playing with my magic friend and my wife as well. I got some more games of magic in with her. I don't know how many more games we'll be doing with this simply because it's not her favorite and we have so many great unplayed two-player games on our shelves here that I could see us getting back to before we do a lot more magic play. But I did that with the two of them as well as with my older boy who requested another couple of games. So that was the typical monthly magic play. For family gaming, we got to try Mansky Caper, or The Mansky Caper, which is a game that I talked about last month in the Games Acquired. I picked it up because I was hoping it would be kind of a fun and silly game where you're robbing safes, hoping to draw coins and gems, but maybe drawing dynamite that'll blow up all the treasure you've collected that you haven't gotten safely to the getaway car yet. That it might be kind of hilarious when a trap blew up in your face. But as it turns out, when I played with my wife and kids, that was less hilarious and more kind of a bummer when you lost everything you'd worked to collect so far. But we gave it a shot. I had only paid half price for it anyways, and I've already gone and sold the game on, so I don't have it here in front of me. But what I do have for kids gaming is Arcadia Quest Pets. We got to the fourth scenario in the campaign, which means we only really have, I guess, two more scenarios to finish the pets campaign, and then we can move on to the riders. So of course the kids are loving playing the Arcadia Quest Pets campaign. Speaking of campaigns, with my older boy, we got to the fourth scenario slash book of Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle. It was certainly fun, although with adding more and more locations and more and more baddies to defeat, the game does get exponentially longer. And I hope that as the game progresses, they'll start maybe removing things as they add them so that they just don't keep piling on top of each other. But we'll see how the last few games of this go. My son does enjoy it a lot, and it is a pretty cool little deck builder, so it's been fun to play that with him. And then the last one is one I did with my younger boy, and he's become, for whatever reason, quite obsessed with Pokemon and collecting Pokemon cards, but up until November he hadn't actually sat down to play a proper game of Pokemon the card game. So I looked up the rules, learned how to play, and the two of us played a real game of Pokemon. And I have to say that it's a game where you really do have to have the exact right assortment of cards in your deck for the game to work, much more so than a game like Magic the Gathering, because you need to level up your Pokemon as the game progresses, and if you don't have the cards that allow you to go from level one to level two, level two to level three, or however it works, then you're just kind of stuck at level one doing little damage and the game goes on for a long time. So I didn't think it was that fun an experience. It was slightly painful to kind of sit through it. 
Perhaps if we had a couple of proper decks, it might go much more smoothly and quickly. But my son hasn't asked to play that way again. If he does, I guess I would look through his cards and see if I can really put together decks that might work well together. But in the meantime, I'm just happy to let him play with his cards in whatever manner makes him happy. So that was it for my month of November. Like I always am, I'm very curious to hear what you've been playing, to hear what's on your radar, capturing your attention. And I'm also wondering, now that I've picked up this Warhammer Underworld stuff, do you do any minis type gaming? Are you into painting and assembling minis and all that stuff? I've been trying to improve as a painter, and one thing I've found is that this Citadel Contrast paints have been really helpful in terms of being able to get things painted quickly with good results. So once I do get things fully painted up, I'll come back in another video and show you my little painted figures there. But I'm always interested to hear about your experiences, so please do let me know. Have a great holidays! Hey, it's Josh. Thank you so much for watching. If you could caress that subscribe button, if you could reach out and touch that like button, if you could share the love of this video with someone who you think would enjoy it, I would really appreciate that. Cheers. Here's the plan. I'm going to talk about my game acquisitions and purchases. That's the same thing. <laughs> Good start. And do a little best of thing for the year. And I hope that they do because it should. I've heard that there's a ton of stuff, a lot of. I still have to get back to revamp my whole, what's it called? Patreon. I still have to get back to my PayPal account in the video. As is kind of the normal these days, I didn't get too much adult gaming to that it might be kind of hilarious when some Good can't reach. Oh. Camera. Camera.